Thank you for joining us for our Faith Bible Church of San Francisco um, prayer meeting. Let's get, um, let's so, open up in a word let's get, um, let's open up in a word of prayer. Uh, let's Father pray. God, we thank you, Lord. Uh, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for gathering us here together to worship you and to pray for each other. We lift up this time to you, Lord, and in Jesus' name. We lift up this time to you, Lord, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. and synced up thank you so much guys um <clears throat> hello testing one two there we go thank you so one of the things when i was asked when i was asked to do this uh prayer meeting today um you know when you're speaking about prayer meeting you start thinking about okay what experiences have i had recently that i could share something that god has used in my experiences to talk about and share in something like this and so one of the things that i can't help but think about was this whole situation that we're in with the covid 19 and and being shelter in place um you know you could i remember the very beginning part of it i was so stressed out trying to figure out what am i going to do oh my gosh my work being furloughed all these things 
But the positive, the best thing that's ever come out of this whole COVID-19 and, and shelter in place was that I got to spend more time with my family. I got to spend more time with my son and my wife. And looking back at it, I'm pretty sure years from now, I'm going to start thinking about this event, this moment in my life, where actually most likely we'll look at it fondly. I got to really talk to my son and, and we go to places and, and we get to talk and I get to actually hear him and listen to him about his thoughts. And one of the things that really refreshes me, and, and it's so refreshing, is when he talks, you start listening and you start understanding his concept of the world around him. He starts thinking, wow, everything is so simple with him. You know, you ask a question, why does the sun come up? And he'll just look at you like, because that's what it does. And because of that simplicity, I start thinking of myself. I'm like, wow, no, was I ever like that? Was I ever someone who looked at the world so simple as opposed to the world where I see now? I'm so different. And so I started thinking, hmm, when I was that age, what were my thoughts? How simple were things? I started thinking about how a long time ago, when I was around Apollos' age, I wanted to go to Disneyland. And my grandparents um, would say, let's think about it. We'll pray about it. I'm not sure if it's going to happen. But if it is, it's most likely going to be during the summer. And I wanted to go to Disneyland around November, right? Because Disneyland was doing this big celebration. And I thought as a child, how come we can't do it tomorrow? Or how come we can't do it this weekend? Why are we waiting so long to go to Disneyland? And so as a child, I started thinking maybe because it's not as up in their priorities, right? It's not something that they really think is that important. And that would bum me out. I was very upset by it. As an adult, I started thinking same way. I'm like, hmm, well, it makes sense because for you to go to Disneyland, you need to save money. You have to make a decision on, on how you're going to get to Disneyland. You're going to have to take a flight or you're going to have to drive. And if you drive, how much, and if you drive, how much fuel you need to use. You also have to worry about hotels. You have to worry about food, all these things. But as a child, I didn't think about those complex things. I was very simple. And in that mindset, in that mind frame, I started reading God's word. And then this is the passage that God told me to just kind of share about for tonight. And so I found today's passage is going to be found in 1 Timothy chapter 1, 3 to 5. Um, I'll read it and you guys could follow along. It says here, as I urge you when I went to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in the faith. Now, the purpose of the commandment is love for a pure heart, uh, love fr uh, from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from a sincere faith. All right, let's pray. Um, Father God, we thank you, Lord, again for gathering us here. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we have to focus on your word, to hear it. I pray, Lord, that you would just silence our distractions and just focus on you, Lord. Let our desire manifest into the, to the need and to the want of growing and maturing in the faith. So we pray for this time, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So what I was talking about earlier is, yes, life is complicated. Life is very complicated. Amen? Amen. Life is complicated. Um, I talked about the time when I was super young and I wanted to go to Disneyland. But then I, started talk then I started thinking to myself, when was the first time that I could actually honestly remember how life was complicated? Right? Sure, you'd go to school and you'd think, oh, the prom, or you'd think of high school drama. But the moment when I realized life was really complicated was when I moved to L.A. I was going to college, and so I had to work to pay for my college tuition, my books, right? And I started thinking, I think that was the moment in my life where I realized how complicated life can really be, right? Because in my head, I was thinking, okay, Lord, what am I going to do, right? I live with my parents in L.A., I have to go to school at 9 o'clock in the morning, but you know what? There's, it's so hard to travel without a car. You know, either I wake up at 6 a.m. and get dropped off at the school by 6.30 and just dilly-dally till my first class starts, 
or I would have to take in the bus in the L.A. district. It's not a very good idea. So I would pray and pray, and I'd save money. I'd work at Ross for like so long so I could get money and give it to someone so that I could get a car. And so what happens is I saved up enough money, and finally I got my very first car. It was a 1982 Nissan Datsun 280ZX. It was, you know, it was, you know, it was 1999 at the time, right? The year was 1999, so it was already an old car, but I loved it. It was a sports car. It looked so cool, and I worked so hard to buy this car. And I thought, ah, life is going to be simple. But as to most of you guys know, is when you buy a car, the first thing you realize is you have to pay for insurance. Oh my gosh. Wow. So that means I still have to keep working at Ross to not only pay for my college bills and all these things, but now I have to also pay monthly, you know, monthly finances. So in that case, I also need to then ask my job for more hours to pay off the extra monthly payments. And then, of course, the more I drive, the more fuel I use. And so now I have to, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? I have to pay for fuel. And because I chose... A 1982 Nissan Datsun 280ZX, I have to pay on premium fuel. So, oh my goodness, it's, the money's getting there. Oh, boss, can I get more money? And of course, the more you drive, the more you drive, you have to end up having to pay for oil changes, air filters, brakes, new tires because it gets bald. You got to do so many things to keep up that maintenance. Oh my gosh, more money, more money, more money, more money. And then, of course, you have to still clean. You have to clean the car. You got to wash it. And of course, the day-to-day maintenance of the car. All of it adds up to more and more money. You know, I remember since it was a 1982 car, there were so many things that broke down that I kind of like, okay, well, I have to get a new alternator. Or, oh my gosh, something is wrong with my radiator. Everything that can go wrong has gone wrong with that car. In the end, I ended up working and working and working just to handle the simple idea of wanting to have a car. So it's kind of funny, right? Like I I wanted a car to make my life simpler, and instead I ended up working more to pay off the car to make my life simple. Isn't that kind of strange? That's how complicated life gets. And that's the first time I realized, ooh, life is complicated. You see, first and foremost, one thing that you have to realize is that we are complicated people. Right? We learn from a young age that nothing is ever really simple. We're complex people, and we have so much clutter in our lives. There's like a billion-dollar industry made just because we're complicated people. We have emotions. We have nostalgia. We have emotional ties to things. That's why people buy memorabilia. Uh, they're attached to songs. They're attached to movies. They collect books and comics and video games, all these things. For me personally, I, I actually... Like, it's so funny because I have a cell phone, and we're all photographers. Everyone who has a phone has a photographer. And I remember just two days ago, I had to dump all the clutter of all my photos and videos into another external hard drive so that way I could make more clutter from my phone. And then so eventually, once that fills up, I put it back in my hard disk drive, and I'm worried that once that external hard drive gets full, I'm going to have to find out another external hard drive to dump all that into. So... We're just so cluttered and we have so much things because we are complicated people. Another thing is, not only are we complicated people, but we live in a complicated world. We have politics, movies, music, theories, and philosophies. All these things are influencing our brains. Right? And it's so interesting because a simple liking a comment doesn't necessarily mean the simple, I like that comment. It's a lot of other things. If you like a comment, that means you like this person. This means that you stand by this person. And because of that, you have to worry about all this person's things, baggage, as opposed to just, oh, that's sweet, like. You know, it's, it is so many things that makes things so complicated nowadays. And then, lastly, the interesting thing about it is not only are we complicated people and we live in a complicated world, but we desire the complicated. You know, it's no wonder that even when facts are given, Right? And, and a movie is set, or, or things have already been set. Already been set. It's never enough for us. It's never enough for us. We know we want more. We know we want more. This leads us to, this leads us to desiring and hungering for more. Give us more information. That's not good enough information. Give me more. So we end up, so we end up coming up with outrageous things like ancient aliens and conspiracy theories and, and wild speculations. 
You know, because what was given is not enough. Everyone has an opinion and they want to have the hottest thing. Right? Like the most right? like outlandish the most outlandish idea, idea in it's like, they, it's like everyone has Facebook and all the social medias and the most outlandish idea gets the most followers. The most outlandish craziest idea gets the most attention. Gets the most popularity. Gets the most popularity. Gets the most subscribers. This is exactly what was happening during the time of this letter. Right? Everyone had all these outlandish ideas. And this is the background that what we have in the passage in the, the, the church of Ephesus under Timothy's watch. And Paul wrote a letter to call them all out on it. Wow. So let's go back to our passage. So let's go back to our passage. First Timothy 1, 3 to 5. I'll read the first part. As I urged you when I went to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine nor give heed the fables and endless genealogies, which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in the faith. Something happened in the church of Ephesus. Something happened in the church of Ephesus. And that something that happened didn't suddenly happen. It's something that slowly Right? The people desired more from what the gospel had. The people wanted more. And they wanted to know a secret elite knowledge. Because apparently the gospel wasn't enough for them. What they wanted and what they had was desire to puff themselves up. You see, prior to charging Timothy to lead the church of Ephesus, and before Paul left to the rest of his missionary journeys, um, he actually, right before he left, he actually excommunicated two very prominent figures in this church, Hymenius and Alexander. And we'll find that in my next slide in verse 20. It says here, of whom are Hymenius and Alexander, whom I delivered to Satan, as they may learn not blaspheme. Now, it's really fascinating because in this whole letter, he actually specifically calls these two people out. There's something prominent. There's something important about these two figures. Now, due to the level that Paul himself dealt with these two people personally, would imply that these two people occupied the highest position in the church, pastors. And they were blaspheming. The second part, the second example of what was going on in the church of Ephesus, we find in Timothy chapter 4, 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. These some were a small group of people, but with high influence. Paul breaks it down even further through his letter to Timothy um, in Timothy 1.7. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. So these some people were teachers. They wanted to be teachers. They wanted to be Bible study leaders or deacons or, or elders or all these other things. And these spread out because everyone wanted to have a hot take. They wanted to have something because the gospel wasn't enough and they started looking for other sources. Next part I have here in 1 Timothy, further on in the letters, it says, Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and able to teach. Let elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. So man, what kind of condition was this church going through? I highlighted this part in 1 Timothy 1 in our passage. Um, teach no other doctrine. That's the first thing that he warned. That's the first thing that he talked about because these unqualified, these unqualified people preach the wrong gospel and not the one true gospel, the gospel of salvation, where Paul clearly talks about it and writes about it in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 5. Now, everything else in, in, in my meditation today is going to talk gospel, gospel, gospel. And so I want you guys to know exactly what gospel Paul is talking about. What is the doctrine that these people are not teaching or that they've went past? 
Well, let's turn to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 5. I'm going to read it and you guys can follow along. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you have received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scripture, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then the twelve. This was the gospel that saves you and me. This was the gospel that Paul and the apostles preached. This was the gospel that caused many, many people to go through persecutions and death. This was the very same gospel that torn down kingdoms and built nations. This is the gospel that every teacher, pastor, elder, and everyone in Christendom upholds. And yet the people of Ephesus thought this wasn't enough. That it has to be more complicated. That there has to be something else. And so, because of that desire, because they wanted something else, something more, they went to fables and endless genealogies. Now, these fables and endless genealogies 